when I'm right up at that edge and I'm kind of like going over the edge and it all hits me at once, I feel the tendency to become overwhelmed. It coming on like anxiety, like, oh my God, how am I going to handle all this? And here's what I learned. I get calm, take a breath and I say, you got this. Hey, 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 you got this. Have you done this before? Yeah. Have you done this a thousand times? Yeah. What did you do? You got through it, right? So what are you going to do right now? Calm. Eliminate all distractions. Pick up the phone. Call that customer. Pick up the phone. Text the customer. Go into productivity and stay calm. Because if you allow yourself to be a victim and go, like it spills over and you go into overwhelm and the panic and the anxiety happens, you're spinning all these plates. What happens is your amygdala fires and your fight or flight goes off, uh, fight, flight, or freeze, and you literally, your body pumps with cortisol, the stress hormone, and you literally become completely unresourceful. I want to share with you a quick, powerful piece of motivational wisdom about overcoming fear and overwhelm specifically and I had to learn this the hard way so I'm so honored to share this with you right now I'm getting ready to run out the door it's morning running on little sleep we're swamped landscaping it's all coming at us we're in the hundred days of hell we call it so if you're in your first few years of your business this is so crucial when you're out there doing the good thing of saying yes, 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 and filling out your calendar with tons of work. You got the phone ringing. Your word is on the line, your integrity to all types of customers. You have employees, you have materials, you have a family to take care of, your own personal health. You got to get sleep. You got to stay hydrated. You can get to this point sometimes where you're like, it hits you at once and you become so overwhelmed that there's fight, flight, or freeze. You can freeze into complete paralysis where you're so freaking overwhelmed that you can work yourself into an actual panic attack. I've done this back in the day. And so here's what I want to share with you that's helped me tremendously about overcoming overwhelm. <laughs> so this is kind of like a neurolinguistic programming NLP thing. When I feel the overwhelm coming on, now we have our different tolerances and thresholds. It's like a muscle and you work it. So when you're just getting started, there's people that tiniest thing overwhelms them and they just flop over into a panic attack. But find that point. It's called finding your edge. You find your edge and you hang out right at that edge. Don't go over the edge to the point where you're now you've taken on too much. But you have to go over the edge and feel that pain I'm not saying to ever break your integrity, but you're going to have to have a couple upset clients to realize, like, it's like putting your hand on a hot stove. <sighs> Whoa, don't do that. Don't over promise to too many people because you need money, but you need money, right? You can get into this cycle where you're like, bah, 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 bah. then you're maybe at home, you're getting heat because, or you're not getting any sleep because see what I'm saying? It's all coming at you at once. So when you find your edge, you know how to get right up to the edge my friend Eric Reno has a roofing business. He explains something amazing. He's a very successful guy. He says, I like all the pressure right here on top of my shoulders, and that's when I perform the best. So he keeps himself under pressure. So you keep that pressure threshold because if you let the pressure off, well, then it's just time to relax and chill. You don't have anywhere to be. But when you keep the pressure on, there's deadlines, there's consequences. This is your circumstance. You have to keep everything going and firing on all 12 cylinders. And that's when you perform at your highest levels. But when you go over out of neediness or scarcity or fear, that's when you get yourself into overwhelm. So here's what I do. When I'm right up at that edge and I'm kind of like going over the edge and it all hits me at once, I feel the tendency to become overwhelmed it coming on like anxiety, like, oh my God, how am I going to handle all this? And here's what I learned. I get calm, take a breath and I say, you got this. Hey, 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 you got this. Have you done this before? Yeah. Have you done this a thousand times? Yeah. What did you do? You got through it, right? So what are you going to do right now? 
calm, eliminate all distractions, pick up the phone, call that customer. Pick up the phone, text the customer. Go into productivity and stay calm. Because if you allow yourself to be a victim and go, like it spills over and you go into overwhelm and the panic and the anxiety happens, you're spinning all these plates. What happens is your amygdala fires and your fight or flight goes off, uh, fight, flight, or freeze, and you literally, your body pumps with cortisol, the stress hormone, and you literally become completely unresourceful. And now everything just like landslides, just falls, it goes right down the river, like an avalanche, and now you're completely useless. I remember one time, and I was a kid at this time, I must have been 20, I worked at a landscaping business. And I was doing music. So I would do landscaping all day. And then I would do music all night. I was getting no sleep. And we were at work a lot of hours, like 70. It was crazy. So I woke up one morning and I went right into a panic attack. And I literally just texted the boss. This is when I had a job. I can't come in today. I was too embarrassed to even say why. And I literally walked to the park. And just laid down (laughs) and just stared at the clouds for an hour and a half. And then the panic attack went completely away and it subsided. And then all this freedom took over and I felt completely free and in control of my life. And I looked at my phone again and all I got was text messages from the boss saying, You chump, you this, you that, you screwed me over, you blah, 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 blah. Like, no wonder I was having a panic attack, right? But anyways, this is kind of funny, but by rolling up my middle finger to the world for half a day, I'm not saying you should ever do this, but that time in my life going to the park and just saying, you know what, I need a day for me just to be in nature. I just laid back. (sighs) Then after a few hours, I'm laughing, I'm jumping, I'm smiling, I'm jogging through the park, I'm doing push-ups, and I felt completely free. And I learned something that day that... I come first. So you come first. And it's kind of like the theory in like, what's that theory? It's in the plane. You have to put the oxygen mask on yourself first. It's so important. So you have to make sure that you go to sleep at a certain time, right? That you get up at a certain time. In my household, I have an old dog. I love my old dog, Miko. I've talked about him for years. He's 17 now. So my wife and I have nights where we get no sleep. We're up 9, 10, 11, 12 times a night taking care of our old dog, right? So sometimes we don't get any sleep. So you have to make sure you stay hydrated. You have to make time for your family. You have to be at the dinner table. The famous motivational speaker, Zig Ziglar, who's a man of God, stood on stage one time. I've listened to tons of audios. He said, if at any time of all the success that I've had, if I ever, ever had to sacrifice my relationship with God and putting my wife and my family first and all that, in order to build this career, if I had to put the career first and make them second, then there's no way I would have done it, right? So the truth is, balance is bogus. And if you have to go work 100 hours a week for three months straight, which we've all done this, it's important to hyper-communicate with the people that you love. Hey, for this season, it's going to be really rough because I'm building this business and I have to do all this and I'm going to do all this, but I'm doing it for us. And then you'll recalibrate when you get the time. More of the Untrapped podcast right after this. Jill's office provides friendly, professional receptionists for small business owners just like you. We can help answer your calls and we can even schedule estimates and jobs for you. Try Jill's office today and get a $25 discount when you say Untrapped. Just go to jillsoffice.com. This is Untrapped with Keith Kalfas. But the overwhelm comes on when you feel inadequate and you feel insecure and you feel like you're not like, oh my God, when is the money going to come? When, how come, when, when am I finally going to get this abundance? Well, the truth is we actually have way more abundance than most everybody in the world. There are people in third world countries that will never, ever have the opportunities that you and I have ever in their entire lives. So we're actually frustrated and overwhelmed at our abundance. Now I know everything is inflated like crazy. The cost of living is insane. But for me personally, the one thing that gives me anxiety, just to be transparent, the overwhelm feeling comes on because I do live in abundance, but the overwhelm feeling comes on that says, oh my God, I'm supposed to be a, a multi, multi millionaire at this point in my life. I should have a vacation home off the 
coast of Florida and another house up north in Traverse City, Michigan. And we should have so much abundance, right? And even as I talk about it, I feel a little bit anxious because the identity and who I am says I should be worth $100 million right now and be able to donate to orphanages and charities and do just literally pick up the phone and make calls and just amazing things happen. So fortunately, that stuff doesn't just happen for anybody who just says that they want it. You have to grow yourself into the type of person and have commercial vehicles and things that I don't mean trucks. I mean vehicles in commerce that do commerce that can create or generate or make that type of money. I listened to a guy named Myron Golden on YouTube. I was actually just talking to Paul Jameson about this on my podcast. Him and Naylor went to see Myron and I really wanted to get tickets and I regret not going. But he talks about from a biblical perspective, living in total abundance, right? And some of the stuff has actually really worked for me. But to narrow everything down concisely, to chase money for the sake of money so you can get materialistic things. So therefore people will accept you or they'll, for exterior reasons, so you can feel a certain way inside. But because of something, it's a self-fulfilling doom loop. But I believe this is kind of deep. I talk about this in one of my landscaping courses, <laughs> fulfilling God's purpose in your life and doing what you're supposed to be doing versus, okay, so if you just go chase and go make a whole bunch of money and get a bunch of materialistic stuff, let's say you spent 30 years working and then you've got the house, you've got a boat, you've got real estate, you've got cars, you've got money and you completely never did what you really wanted to do, and you completely missed the purpose for your life, and you've just sacrificed everything to get materialistic riches, yet you're completely miserable, but you're telling yourself that you're happy because you have all this money that you've worked for, but you completely lied to yourself and didn't do what you really wanted to do. I think that you can have all of the materialistic wealth and money and riches and the boat and the cars and the houses and all these things and be able to give to charities and help people and stuff like and do all these beautiful things and have a vacation home and do the thing that you really love and are passionate and you dream and desire doing but you have to turn off the world and check out of the world and stay checked into strategy and checked into your heart and what means the most to you and it'll feel like a long harder road less traveled arduous path it could be building a multi-million dollar landscaping or tree company but whatever that path is i believe it has to be so incredibly unique to you that it jazzes you up and makes you happy you can go to sleep and wake up in the morning happy and fulfilled because you know you're doing your purpose and you're doing what you actually love not just something just because it'll make you money and eventually get you out of some hell or out of some pain now there are periods in life they could be long periods, especially in your 20s or very early 30s, maybe. If you're still broke, you're still not making any money, like really good money, and you're still in debt, you still don't have like your own house and you're not established, you can't just be like, well, I'm not going to go do stuff that I hate because I'm only going to do, I want to be a famous rapper or musician or singer or be a drummer in a touring band that makes, or a, I want to be a famous author or a football player, like. It's kind of like the kid sitting there saying, if I don't get to drive a brand new Mercedes, I'm not driving anything. I'll walk. All right. I'll have fun walking for the rest of your life. See how that works out for you. So it's like this thing you have to do things you hate. Grant Cardone said something amazing. He said the secret to get to the next level is to fall in love and get really good at what you hate. That will get you to the next level and then you could eventually do what you love. So be practical and logical here. And the reason I went into this whole thing is because I believe that's where some of the stemming of anxiety and overwhelm comes from. It comes from the unmet, fulfilled expectations that society has on us and that we have on ourselves. So we expect ourselves to do so much and have so much and be so much, not as much as we should spiritually and relationally and in our health and our feelings of uh, fulfillment, but it's very lopsided. We expect ourselves to be materialistically so successful. Robin Sharma released this new book. It's a number one New York Times bestseller already. Robin Sharma is amazing. The book is called The Wealth Money Can't Buy. I've already read it. And he talks about all these different, it's like a pie chart inside, all these different 
forms of wealth and money is just one little tiny sliver of it. See, my energy is already going up. I'm already feeling happy thinking about this because it's true. It resonates with truth, truth with a capital T, that there's many forms of wealth. Just being able to be right here right now, I actually got to go and I'm still talking. <laughs> Just to be able to be here right now, and I mean, the sky is blue. I hear birds. It's warm out. It's a beautiful summer day. I have a mountain bike over there. And when I get home from work, I can go ride that thing through the park and have fun. We are wealthy now. We are abundant now. So if you get completely overwhelmed and stressed and anxious, it's important to objectify. Divorce yourself from chaos. Step outside of it and look at it and then go back in and precisely execute on what needs to be done right now. And then the final thing I want to say is if you put it in your mouth, you better eat it. Chew it and eat it. Because you resisting eating what you said yes that you said you were going to do. You told this client you're going to do this $15,000 job and you're going to be there Monday. And then you told this client you're going to do this $4,000 job. Then you took on this job that you under quote for $400. And you're doing all these different jobs. And if you said that you're going to do it and you've already signed and you agreed to do it, you better find a way. You put it in your mouth, chew it, and eat it. If you're trying to spit it out, that's where all the anxiety is. You're resisting. So you get calm. Don't resist. What you resist, persist. And say, hey, I put this in my mouth. I said yes. I wanted to reach my hand into the cookie jar and stuff my face full of cookies. I better chew them and eat them. As soon as you take responsibility and say, I take responsibility for this. I'm getting this done. Boom. Anxiety is gone. <laughs> You just start taking massive action and going out and checking all the boxes and you realize that the overwhelm was mostly going on inside of you. If you look at really successful business people, they're masters of handling stress and overwhelm because they've been through that so many times. They've massaged those pathologies until now they're just highways where they just know how to be effective decision makers in even in times of what they previously would have got freaked out overwhelmed had a panic attack about they're like i've been here a thousand times it's a little stressful it's like you're going into a tunnel and you just focus and then you come out the other side of the tunnel mm -hmm.